How? How did they pull off a, a king bed slide with a master bath ensuite under 30 feet in a trailer? It's crazy! Hey everybody, Josh here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan with the 8263 MBR, the Rockwood middle bedroom with like master bath ensuite, like a giant luxury fifth wheel coming off the back of this thing in a 30 foot travel trailer. Again, that's the thing that, that blows me away about this from tip of the tongue to back of the bumper. It is 29 feet, 11 inches. Um, and, and, and I suppose the answer is because they got really crafty and really creative with the living room but it works, it, it works really well. What I like about this one is that it has the big high-end features for something where you wanna spend a lot of time somewhere. But at 30 feet, and with Rockwood's torsion axle and suspension system, plus the Goodyear tires, plus the standard uh, TPMS, so that you can monitor your tire pressure going down the road, it gives you the comfort and the peace of mind for moving around. So I look at this and I'm like, oh my Lord, if you are a snowbird sunbird, if you migrate with your camping style, this thing right here is like custom crafted for that kind of thing. Um, it is uh, carpetless. It's extremely tall inside. So even though it's only 30 feet, it feels much larger. We're going to touch more on a lot of that as we go through here. Um, now, it's certainly not a layout for everybody. It, then again, I don't know what layout really is, but that's why we carry so many different campers here at Halet RV. But uh, if it's just one or two of you running around, uh, I could see this being just a really, really awesome couples destination getaway rig. Now it's got a couple hiccups. The road mode travel accessibility on this one is a little funky. There's definitely going to be some people say, well, if I have somebody over, they have to walk through my bedroom to get to the bathroom. It's, it's, it's really made for just like one or two people. It's really not, I don't think, designed and intended for having a lot of guests over. And that is the kind of A and B Look at it both ways, fair information that I'm gonna give you on this one today. I'm also gonna address something right away. We're gonna get a ton of questions that are gonna say, is it half ton towable? I don't know that I'm comfortable lumping it into that category. 7,500 pounds uh, empty before cargo starts to feel like a lot for a half ton. Now there are some very capable half tons that could certainly jerk this one around here but I don't want to give it a generalization of half ton towability. Given its size and given the fact that I think you're going to take a trailer like this long distances to get to a destination, I really feel it's best fit for a three quarter ton. And again, if that's the uh, that safety kind of information, if you appreciate that stuff and not just saying, heck yeah, it's good for any half ton, get on down here and sign me your paycheck. Well, hit that subscribe button, like our video, and let's get inside here because I've talked enough. Now I'm gonna say right from the start, this floor plan is not for everyone. This is like a bit of a trick pony, as it were. It does a lot of things really cool and very different, and it does some things you just can't normally get virtually anywhere else. Um, but it's certainly not for everyone, and I want to give you both the up and the down of it as we go. Um, like over here, for instance, uh, carpetless in the slide floor in Rockwood's signature trailers. That is also something that you're seeing happen in their fifth wheels, and they are slowly adopting that through the rest of their lineup. This is the first Rockwood travel trailer I've seen where they've peeled the carpet out. Basically, what they're doing is they're starting from the top of their lineup and working around. Now, speaking of the top of things, this RV has an extra tall ceiling, and it's vaulted. And to give you a better look and feel of that, I'm going to put my ugly mug in this thing and let you see comparatively how much space there is here. Now, if I stand up next to these front cabinets, and this is maybe something to consider. If you're a little more gravity friendly as opposed to uh, vertically gifted, as it were, <laughs> then these tall cabinets might be a little bit of a hiccup for you. You may want to look at something like the 2608 Ultralight Front Kitchen Rockwood. I'm going to reference that trailer a couple times as we go through the RV, and I'll leave you a link to that in the video description so you can kind of see a comparison of that one. But what makes this one so different? Why is it, it's like, look how tall this is in here. I'm 6'3", by the way, extending my arms here and flat palming it, I can't touch the ceiling. I have to do some fingertips. It is, instead of six and a half foot on the sidewall plus the vault, it's six foot nine on the sidewall and still maintains the vaulted ceiling to give you just this big, open, expansive kind of look and feel. So even though, this doesn't have the world's largest, like, it's 30 feet, but it's like chopped up bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, and living room. It's chopped up into smaller rooms. It never really feels, to me, really claustrophobic in here. 
Then again, the lighter color combination that we have here with the Newport Ash Wood Tones and lighter floor combo plus the stone fabric uh, combination really helps lighten and brighten this one up here uh, a, a little bit. Um, lighten and brighten? Yeah, I, I guess that makes sense, right? I mean, for some reason, that's just not sounding right. It sounds like mishmash child speak. I don't know. Anyway, regardless, it's not like I don't do enough of that as it is. Um, they do also offer a darker wood tone decor, if that is your preference, called Autumn Wood. They've replaced, uh, Autumn Wood has replaced the old Slate Wood, which had kind of a, a little bit of sort of a chalky kind of look to it. Um, not that it was bad, it's just that with Rockwood, good enough is never good enough, which is, uh, uh, I think, really demonstrated by the, uh, if you are the campsite kitchen cook, if you're going to do iron chef work from your RV, this floor plan might be the one you want to look at. Because it has, scientifically speaking, redonkulous amount of kitchen counter space. All sorts of prep space. Even when the stove and the sink are in play. And that is a dual roll-away dish drying rack cover on that sink, by the way, which I really like. But you have easy reach outlets where you, uh, well, I was going to say where you can get to them, but easy reach kind of implies that, doesn't it? I, just, I swear, I swear I'm an idiot sometimes. Also, Rackwood's signature feature you don't find in the rest of the lineup is dual section day-night roller shades even on the front windshield, which is unbelievably uncommon within the industry. We're gonna come back and look at this kitchen in all sorts of detail in a minute. First, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sit you at the uh, theater seat. So when you're sitting at the sofa, this is your viewing angle right here. Um, the TV is, are, admittedly, absolutely, it's up a little bit high for some people, but one of the reasons I like to sit down like this is you see that like with all of the, the different windows, and there is a privacy shade in the entry door window, by the way. It's not just shade ready. Rockwood uh, actually includes the shade, where the others don't, Rockwood. <laughs> um, <laughs> and this is also a better time to get to see how you have like, basically that entire kitchen wall there has a splash guard on it, and you might notice too how this has a larger oven. Uh, what is that, like 22 inch instead of 16 inch? So you can actually, you know, cook a small bird or something in there. But you might notice this one does not have a traditional dining arrangement. It has that little elevated serving bar like you might find in a couple of the Rockwood floor plans now. It's most certainly not for everybody. And one of the questions you may have is when you look at that sharp point sticking off of that trim work off the entertainment center right there, can two people actually even sit at this thing? So rather than just talk about it, I figured I'd actually get back up here and I'd actually take the time to demonstrate this for you. And I hope you appreciate the extra little effort. Now, certainly, I am not going to argue if you're actually sitting all the way over here against the wall. Yeah, that's that's stabbing me in the chesticles over here. Okay, um, not not a comfortable scenario. So if you're this person, you're going to have to. Whoops, what am I? Oh, I'm, I <laughs> I got. <laughs> A typical RV nerd fashion. I can't do anything right the first time. I got the uh, the leg of this caught on the little carpet square where I wipe my feet up. So I do need to cheat over a little bit. Now, if I do that, you see that I can uh, I can do vertical uh, stomach crunches sitting here. I can do the rocket by baby crunch method uh, of uh, RV nerdology, which obviously not very effective given the fact that I'm still carrying all this. Then again, it could have to do with the fact that I've had like three quarter pounders with cheese this week and it's only Thursday. So you do the math anyway. Um, so what does that mean over here? I'm going to not move from this seat and move straight over there and see what kind of room we have. So allowing like three or four inches of space between the seats here, am I totally in front of the countertop? No. Is there enough where I could sit here? We could each have a little meal. I could just kind of lean forward. I could chit chat with someone who's in the kitchen. It's just enough. Um, and what's kind of nice here is you'll see later when we close the slide up, you'll see why they didn't extend it because if they extended it any further, you wouldn't really be able to walk around it to access things like the kitchen, the sink, the refrigerator in uh, slides closed road mode. Now, this is, this is probably going to be a situation where somebody goes, no, no, not the right RV for me. Again, check the link in the video description. Look at the 2608 uh, BS Rockwood Ultralight. Um, it is also 29 feet 11 inches. It's also a front kitchen. 
but it has uh, a little more traditional living room arrangement with a normal dinette as opposed to this kind of thing because they went with not quite as long of a back end on that one. So the one's not better than the other, it's an exchange between the two. And I tell you, when I'm sitting here, uh, Josh the RV Nerd, Haven RV News Network, like this feels like I'm sitting here getting ready to do a news broadcast. You stay classy, San Diego. Ah, uh, yes, San Diego. Good old, you know, I never thought Anchorman was a great movie, but man, it is so quotable. It's fun to say the quotes from the movie Anchorman. It's just not really, I don't think, super enjoyable to necessarily watch it all the time. Although, I Love Lamp and I Ate Your Chocolate Squirrel are amazing lines. So in the meantime, moving on from my uh, entertainment preferences in history, remember, where the others don't, Rock did! And they actually included the privacy shade here. And up top, We've got our uh, solar monitor over here telling us kind of how much juice we have left on the battery. I'm going to have to charge that sucker pretty soon. You've also, Rockwood does a nice thing where they still just give you physical switches for things like slides, awnings, lights. But if you want to, you can still Bluetooth connect your phone to that thing via the LCI One Control app or the Rockwood We Are V app, which is actually just another face on the LCI One Control app, effectively. Um, and uh, you can go wireless with those functions. Now, notice, too, how this, uh, like, pantry entry area here, uh, that middle shelf is flipped up. So that if you want to, you can utilize those Drunken Octopus Fight Clubs in there to turn that into a bit of a, uh, you know, coat uh, closet, entry closet, as it were. Um, the uh, entertainment over here, as you see, the TV can pivot. So if you are sitting here uh, at the little elevated uh, Ron Burgundy breakfast bar, which is what I think I want to call it from now on because I love that name, if you want to, you can put the TV up in your face and enjoy your favorite morning program. You wake up, you got coffee in hand, what are you guys watching when you're camping? Leave me a comment, let me know here. Now, uh, getting through the rest of the kitchen, let me get down here. You can see how below that larger oven, they are giving us a full extension drawer. And then as we start wrapping our way up here, one of the other things I want to point out in this kitchen is not just a bigger oven, but a bigger microwave oven. It's 1.3 cubic feet as compared to 0.9 cubic feet like most RVs. That doesn't sound like a massive difference, but basically what this means is this one can actually fit like a normal full-size dinner plate as opposed to just little, uh, you know, <laughs> baby plates. Now on the left, drawers to the floors over here, although just a little sponge drawer on top. I would have preferred a full extension drawer, but I'm wondering with the size of the drawers they use if it just wasn't quite enough space there so they did at least something instead of wasting it. What I'm curious about, and I'd like you to comment on this, is what would you do with the space below the sink? Because when you look at this, at a glance, you're only thinking of it in relation to the kitchen. But outside, you see there's actually an exterior baggage door. That is actually an inside-outside, weird dog-leg-to-the-right kind of pass-through compartment. Would you leave it open? I mean, there's obviously room for a wastebasket down there. Would you put some shelving in there? Would you partition it off? How would you utilize that space? And I wanted to open the fridge from this direction here, and, and thankfully uh, the fact that the RV is not totally level is doing the job of closing it for me, to kind of help illustrate that like when I'm walking around looking at the RV, the fridge looks like it opens the wrong direction, but when you're actually standing here in the kitchen, it makes a lot more sense. Now, uh, the theater seat is the standard arrangement here. I do believe there is a hide-a-bed option. This is a wall hugger, and you see how you have that flip-down center armrest there. So if you're looking for a little more cuddle compliance for my friend Mr. Richard Vale, uh, who, you know, uh, likes to, he and his lady friend will actually still like to cuddle on the couch. There you go. If you're uh, more like me and my missus, and she's like, get away from me. Um, you can flip the armrest down. But what's kind of nice, I wouldn't even really be offended by that because having like phone chargers and stuff right on hand, kind of handy. And even the armrests on this have a little storage pocket on them, which is cool. Now we mentioned this when we looked at the uh, front windshield, but notice on the Rockwood Signature Series models, how we still have that, uh, you know, the, the day and night dual section roller shades. Those are standard on Rockwood Signature models. Um, the, uh, question you might have is with that theater seat or the hide bed is there like some kind of table that you can pop out for eating? And the answer in this floor plan is no. Because of the breakfast bar over here, they have provided a dining solution. So, uh, additional separate folding tables not included with this camper from Rockwood. Now, 
Guys, if that's the only thing stopping you from camping, you give us a call. We're not going to lose a deal over a dumb table. Let's go check out the storage in the bedroom. And I'm actually going to begin with something that is non-complimentary. And I'm going to explain that I it, it really feels like the hanging closet space that we just looked at in this camper. It really feels like it is lacking in this model. What's interesting is compared to most travel trailers that have just two tiny little hanging wardrobe closets on either side of the bed. It has more and bigger hanging storage space, but considering we have like a full king bed slide bedroom in here, it feels a little lacking by comparison. That's uh, again, just that kind of, I, I think fair information and maybe it's enough for you. Like, what do you guys think? Am I just overthinking it? Is it enough or do you feel like you would want more for an extended trip? All right, let's talk snooze o'clock over here. Um, this is a standard king bed slide in this one, 70 by 80 king bed. And if someone goes, yeah, I don't, I don't need all that. I'd rather go to a queen. Understand you can size down to a queen, but also remember it's not quite as easy in this floor plan as some of the other ones. That is an aluminum caged bed deck right there. Everything under that, basically it's all sized for a king. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind. If you wanted to go to a queen, it's not impossible. It's just going to take a little bit more work. And personally, I don't like the idea of chopping up an aluminum skeleton under the bed to do that. So if you prefer a queen, look at the 2608 Rockwood that I just keep mentioning all the time. The other front kitchen that they make uh, with a bed slide. Now over here, these outlets, if you get really close to them, the outlets actually say inverter circuit. There are multiple outlets in this camper that are uh, wired to the inverter that's actually hiding under the kitchen counter in this floor plan. Uh, we'll get a better look at it when we go outside. Now back up in that tall ceiling. Um, I'm open for feedback on this because I feel like I'm right and I'm wrong no matter what I do. This uh, RV is built 50 amp. It is capable of accepting a second air conditioner there in the location of that vent. I believe you can also option in uh, an additional max air vent fan there. You can definitely do that in the living room uh, kitchen vent if you are also so inclined. So all of that information uh, thrown at you real fast right there. What is your preference and how would you want to put this one together? Now, kind of like the living room, the TV hookups in the bedroom are a little high. I don't think that's quite as critical in the bedroom as it is in the living room because to me, this is very much a secondary uh, point of entertainment, as it were. And from there, we're going to move on back here. We got the porcelain foot flush stool, which holy cow. If you are looking for comfort room uh, aside this thing, there is no twist them up bathroom yoga required here whatsoever. And similarly, as long as we're talking about how does somebody fit, now that you know, you guys have seen me in front of the camera a couple times, look at the headroom in the shower of this thing. It is absolutely awesome, and I love it. Now, over here, like uh, pretty much all Rockwoods at this point, all Rockwood trailers and fifth wheels have the shower miser standard. So that um, if you are, you only use that when you're boondocking. But um, if you want to make sure that you're not wasting any of that fresh water into the gray tank uh, when you're waiting for the shower water to heat up, you can flip on the shower miser and it'll just recycle that water back into your uh, uh, fresh tank. Now, this again, the idea behind this one is that you have like a luxury fifth wheel ensuite bathroom. Like, you don't find this in the travel trailer business every single day. And I, and I want to go out of my way to acknowledge something here. Again, uh, something to consider. Someone's going to say, man, there's no way I'm going to have people walking through my bedroom to get to the bathroom. I get it. This is a floor plan really made for one or two people. Uh, it's not really something designed with having guests around all the time. This is like a couple's luxury rolling suite series right here is what this is. Uh, and, and if you are looking for, again, that guest thing, look again at that 2608 Rockwood I keep mentioning. That's what I like about them. They do things the other one doesn't. They're, they're, they're a complement to one another. They don't fight one another, I think. Now, the, uh, the bathroom's massive in this. That's something that's really nice about it. When you actually get out of the shower and need room to put on pants, buddy, you've got it. And I don't know personally how I feel about this. I will tell you, if it were me, I would prefer to have only one sink and just more wide open countertop space. But because the bathroom is so freaking large, you have, I, I think, good counter space anyway. <laughs> and that whole chunk of thing is a big chunk of storage. 
as I sit here doing power squats in the shower uh, to, uh, you know, get you the angles there without me being in the mirror. I'm, I don't know. I feel weird about that. Am I overthinking it? It feels like it's distracting whenever I catch myself or reflection myself in the mirror. But is that just being dumb? Anyway, um, let me, <laughs> I tell you what, let's do this. I'm going to actually sit on the toilet here and uh, assuming for some reason you didn't close the sliding privacy doors, this would kind of be your view of things there. One of the things it does reveal to us, though, is that the uh, because the RV is extra tall, they included a remote control to activate the ceiling vent fan so you don't have to go, 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 gadget, arms, and reach up there to this thing. And man, go, go, gadget. Oh, Inspector Gadget was my show as a kid. I tried to watch an episode of it with my daughter now that I'm older, and that was a mistake. I should have left that as a uh, childhood memory. But giving you that extra bit of information, uh, you know, a little bit of additional effort to give you the extra insights here, like closing up the slides on this one to look at it in road mode. We're going to start from the front and kind of work our way back and then take a peek up in the kitchen living room area here. There's some serious things to consider on this one. This floor plan, when you get there, very cool, very fun. It's short enough that it's, it's solid for towing. It has that cool bedroom slide and awesome bathroom for when you get there but it really is made to be more of a destination model. With the slide closed, you say, yeah, well, I can still get to the bed. I mean, I understand how the bed goes all the way up to the dresser. Thing is, uh, the, the bedroom is actually in its own floor flush slide mechanism, just like the theater seat. And what that means is even though there's rollers under that bed base, they're not actually touching the ground until the slide starts sliding in and out. The rollers are there to make sure that nothing scuffs the linoleum. So the end of that bed is not properly supported for really putting serious weight on it. Now, if you're going down the road and you're like, oh man, I got to stop. I, I, I grabbed that 72 ounce big gulp and it's starting to talk back at me and I got to use the bathroom here. Can you get back to the bathroom? Yes. If you do a Luke knee walker and, and, and kind of see where like I sort of did it myself here. I, you know, keep yourself up in the slide box area of the bed and then get yourself back to the bathroom if you had to you can do that you want to do that as little as possible though and i hope you appreciate this because i understand that this could be a deal breaker from somebody but if it is i would rather you find out now and we find you another rv that works better for you as opposed to buying this thing then you call us and you're all sorts of upset because uh whether it was our fault or not maybe you had different expectations for it maybe it's an idea that you just thought you could do yourself i want to make sure we smoke this stuff out first and foremost. But if what you need to do is just, uh, you know, make a quick little travel stop, like let's say you, you pull into a rest area. So you have things like bathrooms. If you just need to pop in that door, you need to slide in here. You need to, you know, wash your hands, make a quick sandwich or something like that. The refrigerator, the sink and your elevated dining space here, those remain travel accessible. So um, this one is it's more like it's almost backwards from a lot of fifth wheels in that it is snacktastic in its travel accessibility, but it lap, uh, lacks the, uh, you know, common nap and crap access level like a big fifth wheel. It's almost completely opposite that way. And outside here on a windy, windy day. So if the uh, uh, microphone cuts out a little bit, the mic that I use, uh, instead of getting overloaded and, and sounding like someone's, you know, playing fuzz in your ear, it just stops making noise for just a second then it clips back in i don't know when that happens exactly apologies if that is the case but right up front look at this thing just look at that that is just it's a good looking face you know if you're at like a a florida arizona texas destination park over the winter or something like that good lord that looks good you know as you're you know people are walking by i mean they you know it's got some serious kind of curb appeal it draws a lot of eye attention there now that is one of two different decors that is available on this the standard exterior is actually a champagne skin with like a uh, a dark chocolate nose cap which also looks very good um and i'd be curious kind of know and it, and i admittedly it's tough to know when you don't have an a b comparison here for me to show you which one you like better but if you've seen rockwoods or flagstaffs which is the exact same thing by the way and i don't mind mentioning that because i, I like to kind of break down those barriers and have a real conversation with folks um which one would you prefer if your money was online and is it a deal breaker is also stuff i like to know now let's talk mechanical stuff up front here we've got a smart jack standard on these basically what's kind of cool about this like an 
auto leveling system on a fifth wheel, it can remember the hitch platform height that you unhooked from uh, the RV so that it knows like when you go to hitch back up, you push the button and it puts the hitch back at the proper height to get hitch back up. Now the word hitch was used a lot right there. If that wasn't clear, leave me a comment. And I'll try to clarify. Uh, the four corner power stabilizer jacks are the standard setup on these. Um, there is an automatic leveling option on Rockwood Signature RVs. Now you're seeing my little battery box hang out down there. Um, the uh, I was putting it to you know to its paces earlier on the inside of the RV, so I left it hooked up and turned the lights off inside because the solar package that's on these usually does a good job of keeping my box top back off. That actually works very very well. But speaking of that. Not only can you expand the roof solar, which we'll talk about when we you know, get up to the roof, you've also got a simple side mount solar prep plug always available to you there. Uh, we have slam latches on all the exterior compartment doors, but remember you don't necessarily have to wham slam them. No whamming and slamming salmon uh, needed here. Inside of this front compartment though, I wanna get you around the corner so you can see that gray box right there because that is actually our inverter. But what's nice is it's a smart inverter. So sometimes people say, okay, so we have the inverted outlets that you told me about. Um, do I have to always run the inverter to use those? Because depending on some inverters and how they're wired, that could be the case. That's a little more of a classic version of uh, an inverter application. But what's cool on these right here is no, no you don't. Uh, because the uh, that's a smart inverter. So. If you leave it on, like right now, when I'm running off of battery power, certain outlets are live. If you leave it on and plug into shore power, it says, okay, I don't need your inverter. You can uh, go to sleep. I'm gonna start pulling power from uh, you know the park plug here or a generator as it were, which is awful nice. Now I look at this and a part of me says, I would like it if they extended the awning forward, but as I'm looking at it, it's just not possible. You either would fight with the water heater door or the kitchen uh, exhaust cooking vent or window or baggage door. So they did do a good job of putting the largest awning that is actually available on this. But notice too, it goes all the way up against that back wall. And this is one of those really cool Rockwood signature things. Look at that awning very closely. See how it's got an aluminum shroud on it? That is one of those Rockwood signature things that you don't get on all the other Rockwood models. Now, any Rockwood with a triple or quadruple step has a gas strut for easy lift and lower because it's a bigger, heavier step. And in case you're wondering, yes, it does have a spare tire. It's just mounted down below here. The underbelly, as long as I'm down here, uh, you know, squatting and getting my steps in, it has a 12-volt uh, 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 tank heaters thermostatic on all of the holding tanks, uh, and it is enclosed and has a radiant barrier. Now the tires down here are Goodyear Endurance Radials. Rockwood standardized those, I think last year. 87 mile an hour rated and standard factory tire pressure monitoring. So once again, you have the peace of mind of knowing exactly what your tire pressure is when you're going down the road. And as somebody who currently seems to have an undiagnosed slow leak in their right front tire of their 2013 Kia Soul muscle car, um, <clears throat> never mind that. The um, <laughs> The TPMS thing is really nice because like I have a low pressure tire warning, but I never know which tire it is. I never know how low it is and it's nerve wracking. You know, it would be nice to know exactly how much tire I have uh, or pressure I have left in the tire. Now the out, it doesn't have a camp kitchen, I guess, but it does kind of have a camp kitchen because <laughs> we have the outside griddle. This is a hot and cold little hook up here. Now it doesn't have a sink. That is the one thing if you wanna say, it's not an outside kitchen because it doesn't have a sink. Okay, fair, I can acknowledge that. But it does have dad's medicine cabinet over here. So if you wanna keep the uh, bottled water and the barley pop on tap without having to truck through the whole RV, although the fridge is not exactly too far from the front door of this one, you can do that. And that just hides there under the bathroom counter. I think it's kinda of cool. Uh, on the back here, you might notice it does have a rear receiver hitch. And sometimes people ask, ooh, can I tow with that? No. Doubles towing with a travel trailer is illegal in like 48 out of our 50 beautiful states. Uh, so there's only a couple states where you can do that, where there's lower population density and things. Um, and it is only designed to be like a 300 pound accessory hitch for like bike racks and things like that. Uh, the uh, Kia-like system. Every baggage door in the main entry door operates off one key, so you don't need a whole bunch of them. And I open this up, you're like, what? Where's the, where's the storage? It's actually a protected access point to things like your water heater. Uh, why did I stress the t water heater? 
I don't know why I did that. Ignore me. Um, my wife will confirm I'm not always the, the brightest crayon in the drawer. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, the uh, point I was getting at there is that that's a systems access point, but it's also access right to the backside here of our centralized hookup area, which is another really cool thing on this one. Now, uh, something I'm trying to get better about displaying, and if you appreciate this, leave me a note so that I know I need to keep spending my time doing it. This does have split outlets because we have the bathroom all the way at the back and we have the uh, kitchen all the way at the front. You have a kitchen only gray drain up there. And admittedly, I'm gonna be fair about this. That pull handle location sucks. I'm gonna give you a better look at that when we get up there. I did not realize, that is not a good pull handle location. Uh, I've got maybe a little RV Pro Tip to work around that a bit for you, but yeah, that's not awesome. This is easy to get to. This is our shower, sink, and toilet in the rear bathroom area. And again, I hope you appreciate the fact that I, even when I'm looking at a trailer here that we sell, I look at something sometimes and go, wow, that sucks. Like, I try to be fair about this stuff. Um, under the headboard of the bed, we get to see some neat under the skin skeletal stuff that Rockwood does. Because anything that is structural or load bearing in a Rockwood, meaning like the shell of the camper has a welded aluminum cage, or if it's something Rockwood builds that you sit or sleep on, such as a dinette or a bed that we're looking at, it's a all aluminum welded cage. And if you lift the bed up, you can access that kind of middle area behind those drawers that slide out, remember those? Now I said I'd get you a better look at the poles here. It is just like, it is dead under the middle of that front slide out. I, I mean, I, you know, I was hoping I had some kind of pro tip and suggestion for you. The fact is, that is just, rough that is just hard to reach and uh i i'm not going to ask you do you think that's okay i don't think anyone likes it let me ask you this is that right there a deal breaker do i need to tell rockwood the guy would have bought it if that was uh the pole was located like maybe over here where he could get to it if that's a deal breaker let me know either way i'm still gonna let rockwood know by the way behind the refrigerator because the fridge is not as deep as the whole slide, Rockwood doesn't waste anything. And you also get to see how the uh, carpetless slide stuff goes down first. And that's normal of the main body of the RV too. There's a little construction factoid. Not only is it uh, you know, a laminated and aluminum framed roof, front and rear walls, because even the front wall is a one inch laminated wall for thermal consistency behind the nose cap, which almost nobody else does. Um, and an aluminum framed uh, uh, plywood decked floor, but the linoleum is always the first thing to go down so you don't have to worry about it getting cold and peeling. Now the one last thing I want to talk about here before we hop upstairs is the fact that you can get those optional slide awnings applied to these. There are some windy areas of the country where that maybe isn't a good idea, but if you are looking for slide awnings, get them done from Rockwood at the factory because frankly they install them for less than we can just get the parts I don't even know how how they can afford to put them on at that kind of money. It's dumb That is to say dumb in a good way who the winds picking up now that I'm up here on this thing So I'm gonna try to be careful you kind of get a little idea of it the slide awnings ripple dancing over the ripple dance Is that the sequel to river dance that we always wanted? Wasn't it what Michael flatly Lord of the dance man that takes me back to my high school days anyway um, what do we got up here? We got a 190 watt roof solar panel. This is part of the standard build on this RV, but that is actually not a standard piece of equipment, which sounds totally uh, bass backwards. <laughs> so how can a solar package be part of the standard build, but not a standard feature? Well, um, the 12 volt refrigerator is standard. And whenever you get a 12 volt fridge in these Rockwoods, you auto magically get a solar package with the thousand watt inverter that we saw downstairs. Now you have the option in this camper of getting a gas electric two way fridge. You do drop down from 10 point whatever, almost 11 cubic feet to eight cubic feet, however. Um, but it does have an auto changeover backup and on propane mode, it is easier on battery power. So if you're a serious, serious boondocker, that may be the better choice for you. Um, if you go with that and you want solar, you can still get it. You just also have to add the solar package on. Now, regardless of which fridge you get, on top of the base solar package, there's a second panel you can get if you want to go 100, uh, to 380 watts, 
Plus. Remember, you always have that portable panel uh, to be able to park in the shade and chase the sun to help keep the batteries topped off that way too. And frankly, were I not up here on the roof of this trailer, I'd give you a good old Michael Flatley Lord of the Dance dance. But I think the wind, I'm about to do a hat chase if this wind keeps up. So you tell me now what you think about this one. You've heard where I think it shines and where I think maybe it's got a couple hiccups or points of concern. I would like to hear your, like, what do you like about this one? Share this information with me. What do you like about it? And what is one thing you would change if you had the opportunity? Leave me some comments and let me know. Or if I have answered your questions uh, proactively, at least hit the like button or leave me a little comment and go say, Thanks, Halet. Stuff like that doesn't cost you anything, but it does help spread this message, and we sure appreciate it. So as always, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.